If you haven't done so yet, please pause the video and reread the question to get an idea of what's going on here. So what we're going to do here first is use the conservation of energy principle, which of course says that the initial total energy will equal the final total energy. Now initially, the type of energy that's present is spring potential energy, right? The ball is pressed back against the spring and held there momentarily, and the only energy present would be that potential energy stored in the spring. And then the ball is released, and it goes flying off the edge of the table, and when it does so, it has kinetic energy. And those two energies should be set equal to each other, so let's go ahead and do that. So on the left side is the spring potential energy, and on the right side is the kinetic energy of the marble. Now this equation can be easily rearranged to solve for the velocity, and why don't we go ahead and actually call it the initial velocity, because that's going to be the velocity of the marble as it's flying off the edge of the table. So let's rearrange this equation and solve for v naught. We can go ahead and put a box around that equation, because we're going to need it later. Let's also note that as the ball slips off the table, its initial vertical velocity is zero. So we could say the initial vertical velocity is equal to zero. And we're going to come up with an expression for the time required for the ball to hit the ground. And to do that, we can use the following formula from kinematics. And as noted, this term would be equal to zero. And if we rearrange and solve for time, we would have the following result. The delta y being the vertical displacement that the ball falls, which is essentially the height of the table. Why don't we go ahead and box that equation as well. Now, as the ball flies off the table and towards its target, its horizontal velocity is constant. Not the vertical velocity, because gravity is causing that to change with time, but the horizontal velocity is indeed constant. So let's look at the same kinematics equation, but this time in the horizontal direction. And since the velocity is constant, the acceleration is zero, we can cancel out that term, and so we would have the following result that delta x is equal to the initial velocity horizontally multiplied by the time of flight. Now let's not forget that we have found expressions for both of these, so we can make some substitutions. The initial velocity expression is over here, and the time expression is right here. And it turns out that this result right here is going to be central to solving this problem, so this is the one that we really want to hang on to. Let's clear the workspace to proceed. Now what we'll do next is we'll set up an equation for the horizontal displacement for both Bobby and for Rhoda. And so that's our next goal here. For Bobby, the question states that his marble falls 27 centimeters short of the center of the box. So that means that the horizontal distance that his marble travels would be the 2.2 meters minus 27 centimeters. So let's fill in that for Bobby's displacement. Notice we converted the centimeters into meters. Why don't we go ahead and actually perform that subtraction? Now Rhoda is going to be the one who actually hits the box with her marble, so that means her marble's horizontal displacement will be the full 2.2 meters, so we can fill that in here. The next step is basically a neat algebraic trick. You can see that we have these two equations stacked on top of one another. We can actually go ahead and divide the two equations. That's perfectly permissible. And what's really convenient is that this term divided by this term is equal to 1, so they essentially cancel out. With this other cluster of terms, we have to be a little bit careful. Certainly the k's will cancel out, because those are the spring constants, and so because they're constant, they're the same number, so those will cancel out. The masses of the marble would be the same, of course, because they're launching the same marble. Where we have to be a little bit careful are with these x's. I know I've labeled them both as x, but that doesn't mean they're the same x. Remember, Bobby is compressing his spring by 1.1 centimeters, but Rhoda is compressing hers by a different distance. So these really will not cancel. What we'll do is we'll go ahead and divide, and we'll be sure to plug 1.1 in for Bobby, and we'll leave Rhoda as, as just x. We don't know what her spring displacement is. Keep in mind that because of the square root and the squaring, that those two will cancel each other out. So this will just become x, and over here will just become 1.1, because again, the square root and the square will cancel. So once again, we're going to go ahead and divide the two equations. And at this point, it's just a little bit more algebra. Basically, you can cross multiply, and so you'll have 0.877x is equal to 1.10 centimeters, and then divide both sides by 0.877, and you should be able to solve for x and you end up with 1.25 centimeters. So that would be the distance that Rhoda must compress her spring by in order to hit the target.